Station wagons were the vehicle of choice for families for hauling them around for generations. Then they became uncool right about the time minivans came around. Then minivans became ubiquitous and they were uncool. Now crossovers and SUVs are all over the place. Maybe their time has come too. Does that mean it's time for the minivan to be cool again? Well today here on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive, we're gonna check out this Chrysler Pacifica. This is a plug-in hybrid version and see if it's any good. Has it lost any of the utility? Is it better than a crossover or SUV for hauling families around? TLDR it is. And what do we think of it overall? That's what we're gonna find out next. But first, I'm getting back to watching The Princess Bride. See you in a minute. driving a minivan for most of a week here it's an interesting take from us because it's not a vehicle we would buy because it's not a vehicle we need the exception of it could be good for hauling dogs and given that we have a big dog it would work well actually in, in that level but this is mostly meant for hauling families with kids and all their gear around and we don't have kids intentionally so how does it work as just a normal vehicle that you're going to be driving around? All things considered, not that bad. Not that bad. Um, this is actually a very comfortable car to drive, or a comfortable vehicle to drive. It's not a car, it's a minivan, right? So, in general, it's good. Um, the ride quality is, is very good on this. And as a side note, this would make, in our eyes, a very good black sedan vehicle, or maybe even executive transportation. And you're like, executive transportation, really? For this reason. One, it's easy to get in and out. Uh, because it sits lower, the ingress, the ingress and egress points are lower, the fact that it's easier to get in and out is a bonus. The fact that you have big wide doors is a bonus, uh, especially with this version being a plug-in hybrid version where you can do 35 to 40 miles on a full charge, it's very quiet and it rides really well. It's not, let's say, pillow soft, or but it's not wallowy either. Um, it's could be a little firmer, but you know, that'd be like really picking nits on it. So as an executive transportation, I think it'd be really good because there's plenty of room, whether they sit in the in the center row or you set something up customized with uh, in the third row for them to sit a little farther back, that could all work rather well. For hauling families, hey look, it's got all the remotes, everything opens, everything closes off a of push of a button, and it works really well. Um, it's surprisingly, Sporty is the wrong word, but peppy when it's running in electric mode. Now it will, uh, if you really have to hammer it, it will kick in the gas motor to assist you. But as long as you're driving around at sort of normal speeds and normal levels of acceleration, you can keep it in that battery mode for, as we said, you know, 30, 35, maybe 40 miles, depending on how careful you are with that. And it's good. I mean, it gets right up to speed. It gets you from a dead stop to say 30, 35, 40 miles an hour, what you're gonna be typically driving in the city very well, very quickly. In fact, the first time we jumped in, um, we had it all charged up because it came to us uncharged. And, uh, you know, it was it, it jumping across four lanes of traffic to go turn around just based on where we were. Um, yeah, it was like really surprising how well it just 
jumped off the, the stop and, and got across lanes of traffic. Now let's talk about charging. If you're gonna be on 110, a full charge will take you 14 hours. Uh, it was 14 hours and 15 minutes and it's, you know, roughly about 14 hours is what it took us to go from empty to full off of 110. We don't, we don't have 240 at our house. Now it says off of 240 it only takes a couple hours and that's probably about right. Um, you know, hopefully where you work that, or you in around an area that has quick charging places or 240 charging places, then it's not gonna be an issue. If you're gonna buy this, you should probably invest in one. Uh, you'll be using it, and these days you can probably buy one, get it installed for under $1,000 or not much over $1,000. So uh, depending on what your electricity rates are, it may be advantageous or, you know, and you know, who knows where gas prices are gonna go in the next few years. Probably not anywhere, but they could go up again. And in that case, running off electricity, even in California, if you, you know, plug in during uh, off prime times, could work out well. So fuel economy on this is pretty interesting. Uh, we've tried to drive this charged up in electric mode as much as possible. We haven't been completely successful, but you know, it's, it's a convenience thing for us, so. But driving on, in, on normal gasoline power, it gets up to speed just fine. Uh, if you care, we'll put horsepower and torque numbers, both just with the gasoline engine and then uh, if we can find it with combined with the electri electri electricity power. Now, given that this is a plug-in hybrid, it has quite a, quite a bit of weight for extra batteries. The other I don't say downside, but the other side of that equation is the floor, the load floor isn't quite as flat as you would be in a standard gasoline engine. And because that's where the batteries are hiding, it doesn't, does not have the stow and go with the second row seats so that if you want that completely flat floor in the second row, you have to pull the seats out where in the normal gasoline version, you can, uh, they, they kind of tuck in into the, into the floor, which is really cool. So fuel economy, uh, we're seeing high 20s, maybe even low 30, uh, or right around 30 miles to the gallon on the highway. I think it's rated for 32 on the highway, but you know, considering what a three row crossover that can haul what this can will get you, you might be lucky to get in the 20s, maybe. This is a significant increase in fuel economy driving this. That's beside the point of it being electric. Uh, you know, electric hybrid where you can really work on maximizing that fuel economy by, you know, not using the gas engine at all. Pricing on this, well, it is a plug-in hybrid, so there is a pretty significant uh, premium on this one. As equipped, this one is a tick over 37 grand. That's a decent chunk of money, but then again, we go back to the argument of, well, what's a three-row crossover or SUV gonna cost you? Probably at least that amount of money as well. Uh, fit and finish in here are fine materials. It would be nice to see a little bit better materials as we're approaching the $50,000 price range, but A, it's priced higher because it's a plug-in, so that has an effect. And two, it's a utility vehicle that's meant for kids and families, so you don't want a ton of luxurious materials and Alcantara and whatever else that's gonna be a pain in the ass to clean up. You want something that is easy to clean up that uh, you know you can just wipe down, spray it off, and, and you're good. So in that sense, the plastics that are in here, okay, that makes it somewhat more acceptable. In general, our time with this has been really good. Um, I'm not gonna say that we look forward to it, but I think it's, I think the, the best way to sum it up is that pleasantly surprised by how good this is. Uh, again, it drives well. It is quiet, it's comfortable, it's got a reasonable stereo. You know, this one's got the Blu-ray player so the kids can uh, watch, uh, watch on their screens, wireless headphones. Uh, you know, it's got pretty much all the bells and whistles you'd want. This is three rows, it's even easy to get in the third row. Really, not a lot of downside to this vehicle. Why did they call it the Pacifica rather than, you know, the caravan or the town and country or anything else? Who knows? Someone 
that Chrysler or some consulting firm got paid a lot of money for that. Who doesn't matter at this point. Um, it's been out on the market for what, about a year now at this point. And it's only now we're really starting to see a lot of these things float around in our area here in Metro Detroit. I think it's taken a while for some people to warm up to the styling. It's a little bit different, but I think it looks pretty good. It's very space efficient as far as parking. It's easy to get in and out of parking uh, lots and spaces. It doesn't take up too much space. You sit high enough. So that's always one of the arguments about crossovers is, well, I want to sit high up and see. Well, you sit high up enough and you see just fine. Thank you. Um, but in but the other side of that is it doesn't sit so high that it's hard to get people and things in and out of here. In fact, it makes it very easy. It's, you know, if you got kids in car seats, it should be relatively easy to get them in and up and around. So all in all, this is very good. And if you're like, I don't want a minivan, I don't want a minivan, that's just for whatever reason, it, uh, it bothers you that you might end up liking a minivan. Here's the thing. Just take it out for a test drive. You know, try and get it for half an hour, 45 minutes. Bring your kids or whatever else your family with you. Put them in, put them out, put stuff in, put stuff out. See how it really works. And if it works better for you or it's easier for you, it's different. Um, yes, it has the connotation that minivans have. But honestly, it's way more practical way more efficient, both from a space size, from a fuel economy size, than any crossover or SUV. So go drive one, see how it is. You might be pleasantly surprised just how much you like it.